Hello and welcome to another episode of the Health Notebook. Today we're discussing diabetes mellitus and we have Dr. Bangani in the studio. Dr. Bangani, welcome. Thank you. It's very good to be here again. Uh, Dr. Bangani, we, we're discussing diabetes mellitus today. Uh, could you just explain to the viewers what is diabetes mellitus? Diabetes mellitus, um, a very important condition um, worldwide. Uh, could be simply explained um, as a medical condition whereby the body's handling of sugar, um, which is an important source of energy in the body, is impaired one way or another. Okay. Um, th are there different types of diabetes, just to explain to the viewers as well? The easiest way to look at diabetes um, for the viewers will probably to say there is two types of diabetes, uh, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. This all relates to um, uh, the body's uh, production um, and handling um, of an important um, hormone or protein we call insulin. This, this is insulin is important for um, regulating the amount of uh, glucose um, in the body to make sure that there is not too much sugar in okay. our bodies. So, So what would happen if the sugar goes too high within the body? What happens to the body? Over a long period of time, um, when, you, when the body um, has uh, 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 too high sugars, um, some organs in the body may be damaged. Um, so the, the important thing about diabetes um, um, really is, is that it's got long-term effects um, and it, it damages uh, body organs. Okay. Going back to the previous question, you've, you've mentioned there is a type 1 and type 2 diabetes. How common is it in South Africa? Diabetes is actually very common um, worldwide, um, and it's in fact it is suspected that um, in the whole world there is probably more than 400 million people who have diabetes, and that number is increasing. Um, and the type two diabetes being commoner than the type one diabetes, and type two diabetes is seen more in adult patients, and uh, type one diabetes is seen more in younger patients. Okay. Um, if we can just touch a little bit on the fundamentals or background in terms of a type 1 diabetic, what is the mechanism or if you can explain to the viewers as well, where does insulin come from and what actually goes wrong? Yeah. There's an organ um, called pancreas. Um, it is it's, it's most one of the most important um, uh, functions um, of this organ is, is production of this uh, protein called insulin. Um, so there are areas inside the pancreas where uh, uh, insulin is produced. Now what happens is that in type 1 diabetes, um, the body somehow misbehaves and produces uh, um, antibodies which are like soldiers which go in and attack um, the centers in the pancreas uh, where insulin is produced. So your own body is producing something that affects the pancreas? That's exactly the, the simplest way to look at it. Okay, and, and, and in terms of a type 2 diabetes, what and happens? In type 2 diabetes, um, the body somehow does not respond well to insulin. Um, and there's a number of factors that are involved here. Um, but um, what is important at a basic level is the fact that um, there is a difference between type 1 and type 2, and the difference is in the fact that there is still production of insulin in type, in type 2 diabetes, uh, but the body's handling of the insulin and its, its response to insulin is um, impaired in some way to a point that the sugar in the body still remains high um, and, and that causes the state of diabetes mellitus. Okay, so going back now to type 1 diabetes, just to explain to the viewers how would they know that, or, or, or what is the signs and symptoms um, that you'd know that you have, that you are type 1 diabetic? Yeah. Uh, overall, uh, uh, I think we could, we could group for both conditions, for, um, for diabetes as a whole, and say that um, uh, patients with diabetes uh, may go for some time and not feeling the, any symptoms. So the, um, okay, could you explain to the viewers about the signs and symptoms of diabetes? How would the viewers know that they, if they have diabetes? What are the signs and symptoms? 
Very important question because many people uh, uh, may have diabetes and, and not know about it. Um, you, can, you can go for a long time without any symptoms, that's point number one. Uh, but uh, uh, at some point in time, most people will develop symptoms. And uh, these symptoms are usually related to um, the fact that uh, uh, sugar tends to attract water. So when people urinate, sometimes we, we, when you've got too very high sugar in your body, you urinate some of that sugar and it goes away with water um, and you end up being very thirsty as well and you drink a lot of water. So drinking too much water and urinating frequently uh, more than uh, is usual is, is uh, are important signs um, uh, to notice. And, 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 and in addition to that, most people will also complain of losing weight. Um, so if you develop those kind of symptoms, it's important to go and check if you've got sugar. Okay, is the losing diabetes. weight associated with a specific diabetes or? Not necessarily. Um, generally, um, uh, uh, for both for both type one and type two diabetes, it's 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 a uh, it's a common symptom. Okay. So just to explain to the viewers now, what should be done now to confirm that an individual has diabetes, or what needs to be done? You go to a medical practitioner. Uh, you give him a little bit of a history in terms of you drinking a lot of water at night and uh, feeling thirsty as well. What should, actu what should be done to verify that I've got diabetes now? Yeah, so, so I think I'll go back also a little bit before I answer your question directly and say that um, because of the fact that m some people may have diabetes and not know about, so it may be important sometimes for people to go and check um, if they don't have diabetes, even though they're not, they're not having any symptoms. So it should be like a normal routine blood pressure check? Advisable, e everyone should check um, if they have diabetes at about age 45, if you are well. If you, if, if you have a family history, a first relative, um, uh, a first degree relative who, who has diabetes, you should be checking at a younger age. Um, and all people who are overweight as well and who have um, uh, 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 lipid problems or cholesterol problems in, um, uh, that are known, um, then they should check for um, diabetes as well. But for for general population, um, uh, for, any, for someone who doesn't have any of those problems, um, probably it's safe to just go and check um, at about age 40, 45. Um, uh, but uh, coming back to your question about what happens next once you, you are suspected that you may have symptoms um, of, of diabetes, then you go and uh, visit a, a healthcare practitioner and it is very easy to check for, um, for diabetes. A number of things will be, will, will be done. Um, most probably you will have what we call um, random glucose check. Okay. And just going back as well, you've mentioned the normal screening process where one should just have the sugar check. Th this can be done at a normal pharmacy as well, I'm sure. Yes. yes. Um, you can go to a normal pharmacy. Uh, there's small machines that um, they will usually have in a pharmacy and they can check your sugar um, okay. at that point in time. So that will be a, a random glucose um, uh, check. And, and that, uh, uh, if you've got a value of 11.1, of and you have symptoms um, suggestive of diabetes, um, then you will actually be diagnosed with diabetes. Um, but if there are any doubts, um, then uh, a, a healthcare practitioner can um, do other forms of testing for diabetes. This can involve um, uh, uh, a form of testing we call um, fasting glucose test. Okay. Um, or and what does that entail when you it mean it fasting? It essentially entails um, uh, checking your, your, your sugar level um, after you have been, you've starved for about eight hours. Okay, so that um, would mean that you wouldn't eat anything in the evening? And, and, and the following morning if, if your sugar level um, is above uh, seven for an example, then you, you, will, you will probably be diagnosed with diabetes. There's also this term known as a pre-diabetic state. What does this mean? Yeah, the, the, there, may be a state, there may be a state where uh, someone has not developed, has fully developed diabetes, um, but is, a, uh, is having a condition that uh, predisposes um, uh, that particular individual to, to diabetes. And this is, this is where the values um, that uh, uh, when we test for, for your sugar, then the values are not complete, are not really um, are diagnostic of diabetes, but at the same time, they are above the normal ranges. Um, so such kind of patients might have to be watched over a period of time. 
um, because there is a tendency for, for, for such individuals to develop diabetes later on in life. Okay. So you've given the viewers some background in terms of diabetes. What are the complications if you don't manage diabetes? What can, re what can result to you with you? Or Diabetes uh, or high sugars in the body over a long period of time tend to cause damage to many organs in the body. And these organs are eyes, the brain, your heart, kidneys, um, nerves, um, and, and uh, any of those organs can um, be damaged by the diabetes. Okay, so when you speak about eyes and these other organs, just explain to the viewers what, ha what would happen uh, to the eyes, I mean, would, what are the complications associated with the eyes here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the main thing really is the fact that diabetes um, tends to be, in a way, toxic to um, uh, blood vessels. Um, so these blood vessels that supply the eye, um, and, when, and when diabetes over a long period of time damages those um, small blood vessels, um, uh, people may actually present with a number of complications as in they can uh, slowly become blind. Um, sometimes uh, uh, people can bleed into the back of the eye. Okay. Um, and, and there are certain changes in fact that a healthcare practitioner can um, notice if the eye is already um, being damaged from the diabetes. And that's very important. In fact, to add to that is that um, at a time when someone is presenting um, with diabetes, it's possible um, um, that um, one of the things that could happen is that they could be damaged already and, and people could be coming complaining of visual um, impairment or um, symptoms related to their eyesight. Okay, you've mentioned kidneys and how does diabetes affect the kidneys as a complication? Again, um, uh, it, it, uh, a diabetes um, can over a long period of time um, cause damage to the structure of the kidney itself and especially the blood vessels in the kidney um, and this may result in kidney failure. Um, in fact, diabetes is one of the commonest causes um, uh, of um, kidney failure in the whole world. Uh, most patients, um, if you go to a country like the United States, for example, most patients who are on dialysis um, uh, for chronic kidney disease, um, the reason for their kidney failure is, is diabetes. Okay. Any, other, any, any other complications that you'd maybe want to... As I've already highlighted, um, uh, uh, the damage really um, happens to many other organs in the body. People can suffer strokes, okay. um, people can suffer heart attacks, um, nerves can be damaged and people can have painful feet um, and, and because of the damage in the nerves, um, uh, uh, the ability for um, one to uh, uh, perceive pain may be impaired um, and that uh, may predispose one to injury for an example in the f in, the, in the fit if you get injury and and one and one doesn't um, uh, feel that uh, feel pain um, that well um, that may actually cause injury to to the um, to the foot uh, in fact um, diabetes is one of the commonest causes of um, amputation okay. and and that would then that was going to be my next question in terms of gangrene and amputations I mean we, we, uh, as, I've, uh, as I've noted, it's actually a very important part of diabetes. So a diabetic patient is at higher risk of developing gangrene and his limbs being and amputated. Related to the fact that diabetes impairs the ability to um, uh, uh, sense and, and to feel pain. Um, and and, and this, is, this, this is usually one of the most important things that a healthcare practitioner will discuss with any person who's diagnosed with diabetes. Um, what we call foot care in diabetes, um, but we can talk about that later. Okay, now we move over to the management uh, of, of diabetes. Um, can you just briefly highlight uh, some aspects of management of a type 1 diabetic as well as a type 2 diabetic? Yeah, so th th that's very important to, to say that um, having made a diagnosis of diabetes, then um, the discussion with regard to management will usually um, be influenced by a number of factors. It is important to know whether the person has is, is got type 1 diabetes um, uh, or type 2 diabetes. Because as I've said, that if you've got type 1 diabetes, um, the most important thing is that the body's ability to, to produce insulin is impaired. So um, supplementing um, with, with insulin is the primary uh, um, uh, focus in type 1 diabetes. Okay. 
But in type 2 diabetes, it's much more complicated because type 2 diabetes, um, uh, which usually uh, uh, presents in adults, um, usually present um, uh, as part of um, uh, uh, other abnormalities in the body. For an example, uh, many people who are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes tend to be overweight. Um, some patients may have other illnesses like high blood pressure. They may have um, uh, lipid-related problems like um, high triglycerides and cholesterol that are high in the body. Um, and, and managing that patient is not only therefore about um, looking at diabetes, it's looking at all those factors. Um, but to put it simple, most patients with type 2 diabetes will usually be prescribed a tablet in addition to uh, being advised about lifestyle changes. Um, therefore, the lifestyle changes will usually be issues related to um, weight loss, exercise, therefore um, diet-related um, um, issues and, and, and how to control your cholesterol as well. Um, and, and, and if people are smoking, advise them not to smoke. Um, so would you say it's important then for them to go and see a dietitian to arrange a diet tailor-made to their lifestyle? That's, that's important. Um, in fact, uh, 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 in this day and age, uh, management of a patient with diabetes will usually involve multidisciplinary approach. Um, uh, so it's not only the physician, but um, uh, other members of the healthcare system will usually be important in, um, in managing a patient with diabetes. Um, a dietitian is one of such important uh, members of the team um, because what is important in diabetes is to actually um, understand the fact that even though people um, are need to be aware of what they eat, um, but it's not that they necessarily have to eat fancy or uh, start buying things that are different, but it's to, it's to advise them um, within um, uh, uh, the scope of, of their budget and, and what they are able to spend on, 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 on food. And, and it's not necessarily that people have to change um, uh, uh, what they were eating, but it's to, it's to and, and start buying other fancy things, but it's, it's just important to advise them what is it among the things that they were already um, eating that they could eat more or eat less and, and, and how to distribute um, the calories and how, and how much to cut down on, on some of the things that they were eating. Okay. You've mentioned type 2 taking tablets and medication. Um, is it normal for a type 2 or can you maybe advise the viewers that for type 2 diabetic you can take your tablets as well as insulin or I mean just to highlight to the viewers yeah. yeah. Now that's an important question because um, even though b patients with type 2 diabetes um, are still able to produce insulin um, uh, and, and the one of the major problems is, is that of insulin resistance rather than production but at some point in time um, because the pancreas is, is, is overworking and producing insulin, um, it tends to uh, uh, get tired in a way. Um, and, and patients with type 2 diabetes may end up having to be supplemented with, with um, insulin as well, um, which is why uh, uh, you will find most healthcare professionals um, no longer using type 1 and type 2, but rather talking about whether um, patients are, are insulin dependent or, um, or non-insulin dependent. Um, uh, I that's really just because uh, uh, not everyone with type 2 diabetes uh, uh, is, n is off insulin. Uh, some people may require insulin at some point in stage, um, but every patient with type 1 diabetes um, will require insulin. Okay, just moving over to a slightly different topic. I know we've touched We've touched on a lot now. You've, you've spoken about the management. You've spoken about the lifestyle modification in terms of diet and exercise as well. Um, the metabolic syndrome, you've highlighted it before in the previous, uh, when you replied to the previous question. What is, what is the metabolic syndrome? Yeah. So, uh, uh, as I, as I highlighted earlier on, that type 2 diabetes is, is uh, sometimes associated with other conditions. Um, and to be more specific, uh, 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 related to metabolic syndrome uh, specifically, there's um, a patients who tend to um, be more predisposed to diabetes, um, may have hypertension as well. Um, they usually have lipid, um, which is fats in the body um, problems as well. Um, they tend to be overweight. 
Um, so patients will usually be looked in that context um, and a combination of those conditions will usually look at three of those conditions and, and say if someone has got any of those three um, they, they, will, they will have metabolic syndrome. Um, uh, but I think the most important thing is, is, is that uh, uh, when we manage these patients, it's also very important to not just look at that one particular condition that you're diagnosing, but know that these conditions are usually associated um, and go um, screen and look for the other con associated conditions and if you, so that if you are managing the patient um, for one other condition, then you, you are able to, to, ma to manage holistically and cover for other conditions as well. Okay. Uh, we've almost reached the end of the show. Can you maybe just highlight the most important points or a take home message for the viewers? Yeah. This is a very important topic. Diabetes is growing all over the world. Um, there, is, there is more than 400 million people um, um, today who have diabetes, um, and that number is growing. Um, it seems that diabetes is more of a lifestyle um, um, disease, um, and as more westernized as we get, um, uh, uh, more diabetes cases um, in the whole world um, uh, are noted. Um, but what is important is to is to know that this condition is easily diagnosed. Um, even though um, I cannot claim that it's easy to manage this patient in uh, this, this kind of a condition, um, and there's usually a lot of challenges in terms of reaching the targets um, uh, in controlling diabetes um, due to the fact that it impacts on your lifestyle um, uh, quite significantly. Um, but it's a manageable condition. And once it's properly managed, um, a lot of uh, uh, complications that may come from um, diabetes are avoided. And these complications are very important. Uh, uh, and as we've highlighted, uh, uh, it, is, it is not very good to, to see um, a young person uh, blind from diabetes. It's not very good to see a young person um, being dialyzed um, because they have kidney failure from diabetes. Especially in a country like ours, um, that's an important point because we don't always have um, easy access to facilities like dialysis. Um, so as they always say, um, prevention is better than cure. Dr. Bangani, it's been a great pleasure having you on the show and we hope to see you again. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for another episode, same time, same place.